Cool. Welcome to another segment of What the Flip. I'm your host, Victor Vogel. Today I want to talk about a continuing topic that we've all been uh, inundated with consistently, and that's the continued spread of coronavirus, but now intensifying even greater than it was back in April for a lot of really um, poor decisions. I won't say stupid, although I want to. Poor decisions on some people's parts to open up uh, too early, uh, believing that uh, the virus wasn't still there, wasn't as impactful, uh, didn't attack younger people, just a whole bunch of nonsense that science has debunked several times over. And, and now we're beginning to realize, guess what? It's true. Uh, and now those people who made those decisions are trying to backtrack on them, but they're stumbling over the president of the United States, uh, really trying to keep pace with what he wants when in fact it's not what's in the best interest of America. But I wanted to talk about it, uh, particularly from my community of Brighton, Michigan this time, uh, because it, uh, Brighton's a great little town. It's dedicated and the people in it are fantastic. And Main Street is Main Street America. It's one of the best places to live in the world. Um, but it's just to show even we, even we are becoming impacted. So I want to take you uh, to uh, uh, another screen right now. Okay, we're back. And uh, what I want to do is just pray this brief CBS This Morning clip for you. So you can see this is the latest thing that's going on. And I've been throwing this out in post after post after post because it makes so much sense. Uh, but people weren't thinking about it up until now, and it was because, oh, we haven't done all the tests. But you don't need a lot of tests sometimes to know common sense when it smacks you in the face. But now, not only is the common sense smacking us in the face, but a lot of scientific evidence is reinforcing it. Uh, and it has to do with social distancing. So let's just watch a segment of that before I talk some more. The growing concern that the coronavirus may spread farther than previously thought in those tiny airborne particles we keep hearing about, it's commonly understood that those particles, for example, from a sneeze, can spread up to six feet without a mask. But more than 200 scientists are now urging the WHO to reconsider their guidance on that when it comes to indoor spaces. Our chief medical correspondent, Dr. John LaPook, spoke with two of the scientists. Researchers around the world say the evidence is clear. The coronavirus is likely airborne. When we cough or sneeze, larger airborne droplets containing virus can travel, usually up to about six feet. But smaller particles can be emitted simply by talking or singing and can go much farther and linger in the air for hours. They don't fall to the ground in six feet and they can remain in the air for hours and potentially infectious for hours. What would you like the WHO to do? Acknowledge that the risk goes beyond six feet Dr. Don Milton co-wrote the letter signed by nearly 240 scientists from around the world. How certain are you that aerosols are playing a significant role in the transmission of COVID-19 past, say, six to eight feet? You look at the restaurant outbreak in Guangzhou, several bus outbreaks in China, and it's clear that one person could infect people over much more than six feet. In some circumstances, those aerosols can travel more than 30 feet. Each layer of protection helps, like this cloth mask that partially blocks an aerosol from a simulated cough. What implication does that have for somebody in their home or in their office indoors? You need to have everybody wearing masks who are not in the same bubble, uh, and that you need to have good ventilation. Improved ventilation systems are a top priority for New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo. If there is a way to filter the air, and there's a way to get COVID out of the air, then we want to do that. Dr. John LaPook joins us now. John, we're so hung up on six feet, six feet, six feet, and now I just heard you say the particles can go 30 feet. Does that mean if somebody's 30 feet away from me that I can get it? 
from 30 feet out now? Potentially. I mean, the aerosolization process itself with the tiny, you know, five micron particles floating out, drying out, it's rough on the virus. But we have seen instances where it looks like that happens. For example, in super spreader events, remember the choir in Washington State where one person looks like they infected 52 others. And it doesn't look like it could have been totally on the basis of just droplet, you know, within six to eight feet. Yes, I also heard the scientists say it doesn't just stay dropped to the ground, that it could linger in the air. So, John, how are we supposed to move in the world? What are we supposed to do? I think, you know, the, the scientists I spoke to, like Kim Prather, who you heard, said, you know, don't be afraid of this. This is an opportunity. Now that we know that there is an issue, we can try to fix it. So, for example, in buildings, we need to make them healthier. We need to improve the ventilation. Maybe we put filters in the, in the air. Maybe we put UV filters that can destroy the virus in the ducts. Um, it shouldn't be scary to people. Open the window, cr uh, crack the door, simple things. But once we know that there's a problem, we have some of the greatest engineers on the planet in the United States. Now we know there's an issue, let's deal with it. And start with the basics. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. Thank you, Dr. John LaPou. Wear your mask. Always good to see you. Okay. So uh, some of the good news is uh, we can do things to prevent this from happening. The fact is, it is probably going there. Now, they're talking about being inside, uh, but I have been posting on my website uh, what uh, facebook.com what the flip podcast uh, several times articles and pay, posting them everywhere i can about an oklahoma state university study that actually is taking a look at the coronavirus spread relative to when so it's not just inside you need to be worried about but think about this one in a lot of places they have the rotating fans going in the ceilings and that's not helping they got to shut those off uh, which means they're going to boost the air conditioning then they have to put proper filters in uh, there's just a lot we have to do to mitigate this problem but the biggest mitigation that you could see from that video was the fact that a mass really cuts down that spread. It really cuts down the spread, whether you're talking, whether you're singing, uh, whether you're uh, doing whatever you do. Now, the dilemma with that is, the dilemma with that is, is simple. People want to go out and eat in restaurants and drink in bars and congregate, and they don't want to social distance. And right now, at wearing a mask makes that damn near impossible. You know, uh, if you go to a restaurant, first of all, now you need to take those six feet tables and extend them to maybe 40 feet to be safe. Okay, to, to really feel like you've cut the, the concept of getting this down from 85% uh, to like 10% if they're 40 feet apart. Well, that that basically now tells all restaurant owners and everybody, you've got to take your uh, seating capacity to 25%. They're probably not going to be able to survive doing that. So, you know, you could shut down, take your grants and pay for maintaining your business, take what the government's going to give you to pay employees and push your representatives to give you that so that you give it, you at least you've got your business intact. You're paying your employees to stay on the payroll. So they're not on unemployment. You're paying them. Uh, and during this period of time, during this period of time, uh, until the vaccine can be picked up, which I'm thinking is probably at the end of the year. So we're talking five, six months uh, that we have to go through. We've already been through almost five. We've been through almost five. Uh, and we can see right now, people are not going to go into these places. Uh, you know, uh, you talking about the president saying he wants to open up the school. Take, take a look at just a small town of Brighton. Brighton's just a, a few thousand people. And uh, we've already, uh, if you take a look at this uh, particular chart, we've already, uh, we when I think it was back around, um, I don't know, sometime mid-May when I was looking at this, and it was like 
27 or 28 total confirmed cases in Brighton. It's 61 since May, since the end of May through the 4th of July or up to the, this, I think is to the 1st. This doesn't even count the 4th. I'm thinking it's going to go a lot higher. I'm thinking it's going to go a lot higher. It, I mean, if we're following the trend and the trends have been very accurate, uh, we're probably going to come close to uh, doing half, if not doubling uh, this 61 figure in Brighton alone. Okay. So, and if you look over here at Livingston County and, and you think about Brighton, Brighton's a hot spot area where people come to, to for entertainment, food and everything, but so is Howell. Uh, people from Brighton go to Howell, people from Howell go to Brighton, people from uh, uh, Whitsum and that vicinity come over to Brighton. There are a lot of people that go between places from these counties that have less that are going to find themselves, but of course, Oakland County had a lot more than Brighton. So we don't know, you know, that whole spread of cross traveling and, and going to places and then congregating in bars and congregating around restaurants, assuming, assuming uh, that you're trying to honor what the CDC says, but you have to put some common sense with this, folks. Uh, the CDC is telling everybody to wear a mask every time they step a foot out the door and not to take it off for any reason until you step back in the door. So if you go to the restaurant and eat, you're trying to eat with that mask on, you have to kind of like take your food, pull out your mask a little bit, stick it up under the mask, pull it back down, chew. You know, nobody's going to do that. They're just not going to do that. Uh, they're going to gamble. And when they gamble, Here's what happens. We double, if not triple, uh, your rate. I think we've almost tripled it in Livingston County since I think May. Well, maybe maybe that's wrong. May, we're not quite, we haven't quite doubled it. Uh, we were, I think, May 30th, we were at like 393 cases. We're 629. 600. What happened? What happened? Because we were we were staying holding steady at that 300 mark, low 300 mark, consistently week after week after week. And we didn't have any many new cases come on board. But you can see here, the trend is just going. And then all of a sudden around this May 30th period, bang, it spikes and goes up. We know what that is. It was Memorial Day. It was people going nuts because they've been locked up. And now we're paying the price for that. And you need to wake up and understand that. But more importantly, you don't just take literally what people are saying straight out of the box, even the scientists. You have to add your own common sense to this. Think about this. And I, and I want to bring this point up next. So what might be causing these increases in Brighton? Uh, well, maybe it's this. Nobody's wearing a mask here, no, except the waitress. And she's mandated to wear it. If she doesn't wear it, she gets fined. All of these customers here, bless her hearts, they're all great people, okay? But they don't understand that, first of all, uh, I don't know that everybody here is a family. It looks like they may all be, like that doctor said, in a bubble group. But all of these people congregated in this area alone constitute potential spread from people you don't know because none of them are wearing a mask. None of them are wearing a mask. Now, uh, uh, and, and that's just not here. I mean, you can see it just about everywhere in Brighton, okay? Now, people are eating outdoors, so everybody's going, they're, they're saying outdoors is okay. It's not okay. Think about this. If, if they have a test environment with virtually no wind and they're experiencing a potential 30% surge from talking or singing or, you know, just lingering and moving with almost a neutral air wind, then uh, you have to ask yourself, What's next? You know, how, how do you, how does, out, how are you impacted outside when you have a crowd this big 
this big at the top and virtually none of these people are wearing masks. I can't say that everybody isn't because I can't see everybody, but I can tell you when I walk by it and I got another angle from the other side. This is just about half of the crowd that's up there right now. Just half of the crowd that's up there right now. Okay. So the reason I'm saying the wind is a problem because the same day I shot that picture in this restaurant, this is the flag. We had 10 to 12 to 15 mile an hour winds that day. So if, if, if that study is showing that with no wind, it can go up to 25 or 30 feet, what's happening when the wind is blowing? And the Oklahoma State University said that carries it even further. So uh, you're, you're no safer outside than you are inside if you are not maintaining a strong social distance from people who are not in your bubble, people whom you don't know, who you are absolutely sure uh, have not contracted the virus, do not have the virus, do not have symptoms of the virus, uh, can't possibly be asymptomatic, okay? Uh, and it's like my family has been working from home, uh, that we've all been very compact in a house for five months, okay? Uh, we go out just to get groceries and whatever. We do the total disinfectant routine when we get back, doors, knobs, everything we touch in the car, around the car, uh, all the groceries, every box that comes to the front door gets sprayed down and wiped down with something that will kill the virus and it stays on the front porch for a while. Um, you know, uh, uh, it's a good reason why you have the cameras on your door, Bill. Uh, but it, it, then we go get it after and we bring it in and we don't touch it for a day and then we open it up the next day, which is a pretty safe scenario. It's a pretty safe bet. But just this wind alone on that day with that crowd, if we go back and take it that crowd again, take a look. What do you think the wind is doing up here across this group of people? <laughs> if there's virus in here, I'm not saying you're going to get it because of this, but I'm saying you have a hell of a lot stronger probability of getting it from an asymptomatic person or even somebody who they've just tired of being in and they don't give a damn. They're younger. They don't think, you know, you know, they can, people can weather through this, but, but not everybody up here is younger and not everybody, even if they were infected, uh, there are a lot of people who they've touched that won't, wouldn't be infected. And that's how it started in Texas and Arizona and Florida. They opened up with a bang you had all those big groups on the beaches, all the people crowding in the bars, all the parties going on. Bam, 600%, 50,000 people a day now being infected. Uh, the death rate's down, but don't take, like Dr. Fauci said, don't take any solace in that because that figure hasn't hit the, hit the mark yet. We still have another two or three, maybe even four weeks before we see the total impact of that. And it may destroy the hospital systems in Texas and Florida and Arizona and now California. Guess what? They mentioned Governor Cuomo. New York has a 1% increase, a 1% increase. This guy was the toughest guy. He got hit the hardest. He hammered down and forced people to do what they didn't want to do. And he asked them for their help. They committed to it. They're opening back up very, very, very slowly, but they are opening back up and they have 1% increase because of maybe that slow opening versus a 600% increase in Florida, Texas, who just went all out. The, the, the proof is just too, too uh, evident for people to deny this. I mean, you can deny it, but you've got to be absolutely out of your mind to deny it. So, uh, you know, and then on top of that, people uh, are basically uh, sending their kids out here, uh, block these shots out, because I don't like showing, even when they're fake, you can't see their faces, but 
this is a group of teenagers, they're, they're early teenagers. And I watched them for quite a while while I was walking and they were together and they're bike riding. So you know when they're bike riding, they're exerting a lot more energy uh, and a lot more breath is going out in there. Uh, I'm guessing not every one of those are family members uh, that live in that bubble that the doctor's talking about. And this is the kind of thing. So when you send your kids out un unsupervised, you can't count on them doing the right thing. You just can't do it. It's not going to happen. Uh, so these things, you know, because as far as they're concerned, yeah, it's nothing to them. Even if they got, you know, a slight fever and cold, they get it every year. You know, they talk about schools and spreading in schools. Every year the flu goes up because kids bring it home from school. Okay, it's just something we've been living with for years. And then in the summer, it dies down when the kids are not in school. Think about that. I don't think it's as much the heat as it is. In fact, we are just social distancing more. We don't have a bunch of kids, 35 kids crammed into a classroom. And parents sending them to school, even though they're sick, because they have to go to work. Uh, so these are the things that we're having to fight right now to get people to understand. Um, and, and I understand the frustration of it. Trust me, I'm 74 years old today. Today, I'm 74 years old. And uh, every day I spend in this house or isolated because people can't sacrifice is a day less of my life that I can enjoy. And I don't have near as much as these younger people do. Okay, so... When you think about us, you need uh, the senior citizens who you can be impacting. You may be not be impacting directly, but indirectly, you're forcing me to stay in my house. You're forcing me to stay in my house. That's kind of like a slow death sentence for me. Okay, so you need to pay attention and and stop and think. This is not Republican. It's not about freedom. It's not about the Constitution. This is about helping people beat this virus until we can get a vaccine and we can get back to a normal life. It's not forever, folks. It'll be for a while, but it's not forever. And certainly forever is not a long time for me compared to a lot of you. So think about what you're doing to other people. Think about how you're, you know, how you could be impacting your own health because, you know, I have a friend that had this in the 20s, early 20s, and just a picture of a bodybuilder guy, just a picture of how went in the hospital, went on the ventilator, came out. I don't know that he will ever, ever reach where he was before in his, you know, probably late or, I mean, early to mid 20s now sure he'll ever get back where he was okay we don't know that we don't know the long-term impacts of all this on people so don't and and he would tell you today he was stupid so every other one of you young people take heed and pay attention and learn from the evidence and the experience and you know right now Singular, the big, the, the two biggest things you can do right now take virtually no effort on your part. You don't have to give up a lot. You may have to give up some things, but you don't have to give up a lot. And one of those is to wear a mask all the time. Step foot out the door, put the mask on. The minute I step foot out my door, my mask goes on. So right now, we need that help. So go do this. Go do this. Now wear your mask. Now think about it. Stay. Don't don't think you're safe sitting in a restaurant area with lots of people in it. Um, that's not social distance up to 30, 40, 50 feet from each other. Uh, you're not, particularly if you have a wind. Uh, I'm looking outside today. Out my window here is five ten mile an hour wind. Okay. I can go downtown. I'm sure people are eating on top of that same restaurant and in, in those same patio areas outside thinking they're safe. They're not. They're just not. Think about it. 
if, if it can travel this far, what does the wind do with particles in the air? It's just science. We can't deny that. So please do that. Okay? All right. You have a great day. You can like my Facebook page, What the Flip, and follow me. And stay tuned for more broadcasts of this podcast, What the Flip. Until then, have a great day.